Well, part of the system in the United States, in art colleges and universities generally, is that universities have become very aware of health concerns and environmental concerns. So using, and I'm not speaking just about the arts, you know, any of the disciplines, the sciences, laboratories, any of the disciplines that are using chemicals or processes that either generate uh, dangerous byproducts or perhaps are challenging to health, all of those materials and processes are, have been reviewed at most universities and faculty in the various disciplines, I'll speak for myself in the arts, faculty are charged with teaching their curriculum, developing the curriculum, being aware of new processes and new techniques and including materials and processes that are healthy for students and faculty and healthy, safe for the environment. So having made prints for a long, long time and having learned with all of those challenging materials, acids and solvents that are so unhealthy, yeah, it's important for us as artists, for our own longevity, to learn these processes and obviously essential to teach them, not just so students now are working in a healthy environment, very important, but also when they work independently as artists in their own studios or in other settings, they understand how and why they're using these new techniques, these new materials, and they can have a healthy environment in their own studio or in their own teaching setting, whatever that might be. So it's, it comes from on high, these expectations for healthy and environmentally friendly materials. And then it creates, uh, opens the opportunity, I see it more of an opportunity than a challenge, to find alternatives in printmaking techniques and materials. And, and they, there are lots of them, in fact, uh, and it's not just the states, obviously other parts of the world too, Europe um, uh, in particular, lots of printmaking studios that have developed healthy, safe uh, materials and processes. I think, here's a little segue, I think printmaking is similar to some other disciplines, let's say working in clay, ceramics. So again, there are a lot of chemicals, lots of techniques, lots of equipment, uh, and it's easy for a printmaker or an artist working with clay processes, or let's say sculpture, welding and casting, it's easy, I think, to get caught up in technical considerations. First of all, you have to understand them to use them properly. But if one doesn't have ideas to undergird them, then the product, whatever that may be, a piece of sculpture or a print or a pot, um, the product may have a fairly thin meaning. <laughs> it may be a great example of this technical process, but why does it exist? Why does that artist need to make that print? What drives the process? I think in the States, generally, and again, you have to keep in mind, I'm making lots of generalizations. It's not um, a monolithic approach to teaching in colleges and universities. But generally, contemporary art being made in universities is not driven by technique. Uh, perhaps to a fault. So students may study printmaking, and depending on their particular conceptual premises, they may explore printmaking in a fairly narrow way. And they may not master technical skills because their concept is driving the process. Uh, or perhaps they do master certain technical areas, but only one subpart of printmaking. Unlike here, where, as I understand it, all the students in printmaking must be conversant in all the major traditional printmaking techniques. So I'm, I'm exposing a prejudice, a bias now. It comes from my own background, but it also comes from what I have seen over many, many years of not just student work, but artist work. I think any artist, and I'm using the term artist now and not printmaker because it's a broad application, it's a broad opinion. I think any artist is more capable of expressing concepts the more facility she or he has with technique or material 
or process, whatever word you want to use there, the language of the visual arts. Maybe that's the best way to, to use it. We have visual language that we express through these materials, techniques, and processes. And if I can't articulate visually what my idea is, then I'm at a disadvantage. So, I think this is a problem in some universities and art colleges in the United States where students have fascinating concepts, but their visual vocabulary doesn't match the sophistication of their concept. So the rather traditional solution that I have in mind that I think is important is give those students, prepare those students with the vocabulary Remember, I'm using that term to describe technique and process and materials. So that in five years of time, or 10 years time, or 15 years time, when all those techniques that they learn now will perhaps be passe, they have the understanding of the meaning behind those technical abilities, that they can take it forward into the current iteration of process or technique. But if they've never really established or understand or have practiced that visual language, they're at the very least dependent upon people who have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's another approach to art making. Mm -hmm. um, the artist is the one with the concept, and she or he has the technicians who see it to uh, its uh, fruition. I mean, that happens, and, and it's not a criticism of it, it's simply a very different approach. It does presuppose, though, that one has the facilities and the wherewithal to have that technical support system, to have my staff uh, realize my concepts. And there are lots of very successful artists, certainly, not just contemporary, that's true through history, right? The schools of artists who uh, had people working for them. But one doesn't begin there. And I think on a very practical level, one has to think about, okay, an artist has studied, has gotten their master's degree, has passed through the program and is now a practicing artist, how do they practice? How do they maintain their own practice? Art making, visual art making is a fairly solitary activity for the most part. And so one has to have the wherewithal to realize those ideas individually. That was a bit of a tangent, but I think it was important to talk about the undergirding of technique.